Connecticut, which camera over here won? Connecticut has the worst achievement gap in the country among white students and their black and brown peers. The worst in the country. Some lawmakers have offered a solution. We're here now with State Rep. Jason Bartlett and education advocate Danielle Smith, who are both here. This is a big problem, right? It's been an ongoing problem, but things are getting a little serious now where the lawmakers are jumping in and advocates are saying, hey, it's got to stop. What's happening here now? What's the next step in this uh, daunting challenge? Well, uh, it is a historic campaign that we've undertaken. The Black and Puerto Rican Caucus has taken the lead, joined by folks like Danielle and a bunch of other education advocates. And we've already gone around the state. We've had four town halls, and we've invited parents, teachers, administrators, everybody involved to come forward and give us their best practices. We've come up with a 10-point plan to actually address the achievement gap in this state to get the state prepared to apply to the federal government for these race to the top dollars for Connecticut, that's $200 million, mm -hmm. and to also state to folks, regardless of race to the top, we want, demand, and expect education reform here in the state of Connecticut for our kids of color. It's time that we actually do something to get everybody in education here. Let's talk straight. That we can talk about the achievement gap. Isn't really about a preparation gap, and shouldn't the focus really be on getting these kids to read at grade four is the key grade, right? If the kids are reading at level and from grade four, that's almost three quarters of your battle. Am I oversimplifying this? No, you're not. In fact, I would say that by third grade, what we have seen is that if young particularly males of color, are not able to read at that age, then they're more likely to go to prison than they are to go to college. And so we absolutely have to be starting early. But to the point that Jason was making about why now, um, the Connecticut Black Alliance for Educational Options is the organization for which I'm the state director, and we've been thrilled to serve as a convening organization, not only for these conversations, but also to start to help parents and community stakeholders to become much more conversant on the issues. Because when parents understand that, then the way in which they have relationships and navigate their relationships with district officials, with educators, is, is radically different. They're able to really be competent in the conversation, and they're armed with the tools that they need to be really effective advocates. That's very critical, right? Because we all know the perception out there, let's be very honest, is that black parents, quote unquote, don't care about their education of their kids. That's what they say out there, that, oh, those parents don't care. That's why these kids are, are failing. Talk about that, because that's, that's out there. It's not true. And I mean, even as just last night was a tremendous example of this. Um, there was a hearing at the Capitol that dealt with, um, um, in particular, charter schools and the support that the state gives to them and the support that districts do or do not give to them. And there were parents, a hundred parents, who showed up in the snow to come and to sit there and to discuss sort of why they cared, why this was important, just to express their support visibly. That's just one example. But we have, we have parents who are in district schools and magnet schools, parents who absolutely care about this issue, who don't care what school type their child attends, but who just want to see that there are options within the public system that are high quality that will prepare their children children to be competitive. One of the biggest components of this is going to be parent empowerment. Mm. Uh, we have a piece that says that every school has to have two parent-teacher conferences a year uh, empowering parents. We also have another piece called the parent trigger. And we're going to see if parents uh, are going to get involved. Well, I think well, behind well, this... The, the, the it's parent trigger, you should explain, the parent trigger is where if over, what, 50% of the parents are upset, they can basically overhaul the We have school? 185 failing schools in the state of Connecticut, right. 185. At each one of those schools, we're saying uh, we're going to have a process, okay? 51% mm -hmm. of the parents vote to reconstitute the school or to remove the principal. Ooh. This will be the trigger. That could be dangerous, right? That could, that could be a uh, Well, you know, so, you know, the challenge is uh, mm -hmm. all of a sudden if you want to say to me, well, you know, parents of African Americans and Latinos don't want to be involved, but all of a sudden they're, they're coming together because their kids are not able to read and able to do basic math, mm. and they come together and say, no, 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 we want to change, we want a new administration, we want, uh, we want to look at the teachers that are here, are they serving our kids, we want a conversation, and we want change. And Accountability, as a legislator, right? Accountability. I want to, exactly. As a legislator, I want to empower parents. I want to have this conversation. Let's look at the list here for the, you have 10 points here, let's look at some of them. Income tax breaks for teachers willing to work weekends, Saturdays. Talk about that. The unions are probably already they're, they're having their coffee now saying, no way. Talk about that. Well, I, I think teachers are willing to work longer hours and work Saturdays. It's always it's a matter of money, right? I mean, everybody has to be compensated. But we know, Danielle and I know, that 
best practices, longer school days, Saturdays to do some remediation from the week or what have you. Well, how the state has to be a partner. That's how I look at this. And what I'm saying is let's pilot it out into priority school districts and let's bring the teachers and the administrators together and let's do our own race to the top from the state of Connecticut saying to, to, to teachers, look, you don't have to pay income tax here in the state of Connecticut if you will agree to longer school days and Saturdays. We're trying to empower our superintendents, give them another tool to say, look, we don't have you know, more money necessarily, but this is what we do have, and can we work together to achieve the kinds of best practices that we know are, are going to help our kids. We have kids. 90 seconds. I want to speed things up here. A couple other things. Better access to advanced placement courses. Very interesting. Danielle. Connecticut has an abominable achievement gap, and the achievement gap is particularly problematic for our lowest performing students, but even our higher achieving students are not doing so great that that is what's creating the gap. So yeah, we talking need... real plain, a lot of black kids, Latin, Latin kids are not steered toward these rigorous courses. Well, no, there's tracking in some of our school systems, there's low expectations across mm -hmm. schools, so the, the point here is that we're incentivizing students to do better and, to, and incentivizing schools to provide opportunities for there to be increased rigor in the curriculum so that students are being pushed to high academic achievement. It's about raising Raising the standard for all of our students and particularly for those students that are lagging behind. But every parent should be asking, how do I get my kid placed for AP classes and how do you get in position so they have a, a whole lot of those, right? Every parent should be the question. College. I mean, AP, advanced placement is a barometer that's a benchmark for all schools. So you don't have to graduate from Glastonbury, you know, to get it. If you take AP in Hartford, um, that is a benchmark that every college will recognize. So it's very important. What we found is, you know, a, a school in Hartford had 95% population with black and Latino and no kids in AP. Right. That's a problem for me. I have real issues with that. Advanced placement is not for, it's not an elitist thing. All our kids should be in those classes, and we want to make sure that that happens. We want to make it available. We want it online available. You want to say budget cuts? Fine. Offer it online. Let's get everybody going online in the state of Connecticut. We have budget problems, and offer some of these things online so that kids can go higher. I'm going to steal a few seconds from the third segment because this is very important. Another link here. Link teacher and administrators' evaluations to student performance. Put the money where their mouth is. 15 seconds, why that's so key? Well, right now we don't have a way of really knowing how effective our teachers are based on student performance. And this is not something that's just a punitive measure. It helps us to be able to offer the necessary support so that we improve the quality of teaching, the quality of instruction, and the efficacy of our teachers and our school leaders. And we know that schools that have great school leaders and effective teachers that's critical to it's actually the closing the gap. number one thing for race to the top, too. If we don't do that in the state of Connecticut, we're not going to get any federal dollars to improve education here in the state. Yeah, if I don't move on, they're going to cut this show right here as it sits right here. Thank you very much, folks. When we return, our provocative pastor and relationship expert, T.C. Bradley, tells us why Facebook is ruining relationships. Don't go away.